To Argentina now, where supporters of the right-wing outsider Javier Millet have been celebrating his victory in the presidential election. Mr. Millet, known as El Loco, or the madman, pulled off a major upset. Provisional results show the self-styled anarcho-capitalist won with 55.7% of the vote. The people of Argentina have elected far-right outsider Javier Mele uh, as their new president, delighting the far-right here in the United States. Now, before we get to their gloating, uh, here are some details about uh, Mele and why voters chose to go with this anti-establishment candidate. Now, he won against renewal front party candidate Sergio Massa. 55.7% to 44%. Uh, Millet has promised drastic changes, which include ditching the local currency, the peso, for the dollar and blowing up the central bank. He has also proposed cutting welfare payments and slashing bureaucracy by closing the ministries of culture, women, health and education, among others. On social issues, he is as far right as you would expect, very similar to what we see here among right wing politicians in the United States. He wants to loosen gun laws. He wants to abolish abortion, which was actually legalized in Argentina fairly recently in 2020. And he also wants to allow the free market sale of organs in the country human organs that is. Now his victory comes amid deep a deep economic crisis, which has seen annual inflation rise to 143% and 40% of Argentines living in poverty. Now I give all that information to kind of explain where the hearts and minds of the voters in Argentina happen to be. I think that that is something that we should listen to, we should consider. So I don't wanna put words in their mouths. The BBC actually spoke to voters in Argentina and here's what they had to say. No estoy de acuerdo con todas sus políticas sociales, pero sí con la mayoría de las económicas. Y me parece que Massa no está dando su plan, no está diciendo qué va a hacer. Mucha corrupción con el gobierno que está, mucha pobreza, mucha inflación. Como ministro de Economía no hizo nada, es el peor gobierno de la historia de la Argentina después de la democracia y por eso decidí votar un cambio. Me inclino por mi ley porque el modelo de país de este joven es un país, eh, como te dije, libertario, sin un hombre honesto. Y eso ya es mucho. Se eligen entre dos modelos muy diferentes, entre un modelo que para mí ha fracasado en América Latina y un modelo que es algo diferente, que no me convence del todo, pero que eh, muestra algo diferente y bueno, hay que, para mí gusto, darle la oportunidad. El futuro está en un cambio y el cambio estará por verse, pero no lo que hubo, son años de lo que hubo. So clearly they note all sorts of flaws within the political system in Argentina that they wanna fight back against. And so they're placing their bets on this anti-establishment candidate who is now the president elect. They mentioned corruption, they mentioned an unstable economic system that has led to poverty. And as you can tell from the multiple answers that they gave journalists there, there is deep anti-establishment sentiment because they feel that the traditional political parties have failed to provide the representation that they want in the country. Yeah, I don't know when it's gonna get through their heads. The answer is never for people that are in Washington in this country. It's the whole world is sending the same message. It's so obvious, change. These neoliberals, which by the way, if the words are confusing because neoliberal actually means economically conservative, okay? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the Democratic Party has adopted it from the Republican Party here in America. So it's filled with neoliberals like Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. Those folks think, oh no, the establishment is the way to go. Status quo, corporate rule, bottom down, we tell you what to do, you shut up and take it. If there's ever an economic crisis, we blame you for it, we punish you for it. But we give giant bailouts to the rich, to the corporations, to the banks. That's neoliberal policies. Well, the whole world is vomiting those policies. They hate it. Wherever anyone raises their hands and goes, I'm different, they go, yes, that one. Even Macron in France, you know why he won? Because he was outside the two parties and people thought he was gonna be for change the first time that he won. Like, and then and every time everyone's shocked. And now they're shocked in Argentina. Can you believe the guy who's for a lot of change won? Of course I can believe that they have inflation at 140%. Mm -hmm. What kind of maniac runs on status quo?
and, and the kind of maniacs that run the Democratic Party here in America. And look, I, I can't help but notice the parallels to Donald Trump because as we showed you the video of the voters explaining why they support um, Millet. You know, one of the, the women specifically said, look, I don't like his social policies, they, I don't favor them. But I do favor what he wants to do economically, right? Now, I think much like Trump, he's probably going to, there's gonna be a lot of talk with really no execution in, in improving the economic conditions for ordinary people. I mean, look, that's just my prediction. Let's just wait and see, I guess, let me be fair. Uh, however, analysts say that Millet's aggressive style and his promise to do away with the political caste, which he blames for the country's ills, appealed to voters who are fed up with Argentina's established parties. He said, quote, this model of decadence has come to an end. There is no turning back, he told his supporters in his victory speech, promising a new era for Argentina. From being the richest country in the world, today we are ranked 130th. Half of Argentines are poor and the other 10% are destitute. Stop this impoverishing model of the caste. Today we embrace the libertarian model so as to return to being a global power. And remember, he wants to cut down the welfare state in Argentina, which I would venture to say is unlikely to bode well for the very voters who are concerned about their own economic stability. But we'll see how it plays out. And there are fair questions about how much he can actually do given the political limitations in Argentina. For instance, his party only holds a small number of seats in Argentina's Congress that he will need to therefore have like he'll have to negotiate with them and engage in concessions in order to get any policies accomplished. But despite his anti establishment rhetoric, he has in the past been quick to basically bury the hatchet if it if it benefits him. Following his win in the first round, he actually stopped attacking the third placed candidate, conservative Patricia Bullrich, who in turn threw her support behind him in the second round. And even more concerning is his choice of running mate. That, that is something that I think people in Argentina should be aware of if they're not already. So his choice of Victoria Villarreal as his vice presidential running mate shocked human rights campaigners in the country in which 30,000 people were killed or forcibly dis, uh, disappeared under military rule from 1976 to 1983. Apparently his running mate, who is now gonna be the VP, comes from a military family, has defended officers convicted of crimes against humanity and proposed dismantling a museum which commemorates victims of Argentina's military junta. Yeah, so, so. look guys, there's the number one problem here is the establishment all across the world bottles up populace on the left. That, and they don't let them out. They're like, no, if you're coming from the left, you have to be an establishment elitist, prick and you have to talk about how the status quo is great and we should all live under corporate rule. And if any populist pops up their head like Bernie Sanders did and Jeremy Corbyn did, they get attacked viciously. And if you're not at the stature of a United States Senator like Bernie Sanders, oh my God, you're gonna get eviscerated, right? And so what does that do? It leaves populism only to the right wing. But populism is gonna win, of course it's gonna win, you schmucks. So when people are are suffering under 140% inflation like in Argentina. The chance of them voting for the same old, same old, the status quo is 0%. How could you be surprised by that? How stupid are all these leaders? And it's not about being stupid, it's greed, it's selfishness. If we just take a little bit more from the people and call that leftist, that's not leftist, that's the opposite of leftist. So what is this clown in Argentina gonna do? He's gonna now privatize almost all everything in Argentina. And you know what happened last time that happened in Russia, for example? The biggest robbery you've ever seen in your life. It created the Russian oligarchs, it created a system that eventually led to a dictatorial regime under Putin at this point, faking elections, etc. It leads to nothing but disaster. So, since the only option for populists was right wing, they went right wing, and now it's going to lead to disaster. But anytime you propose populism on the left, it's the media that eviscerates you. No! Corporate rule is awesome. Do not raise your heads, leftists. So now they're going to. And by the way, here's a proof of concept. The one place where populists on the left was allowed was Brazil, and then Lula won, mm -hmm. and Lula won easily. The leftist populists will win much more easily than right-wing populists. But we have to get under the oppressive 
thumb of mainstream media here in America. So as I promised, the right wing in America has been gloating about this win in Argentina. Donald Trump posted about this on Truth Social multiple times. In one instance saying congratulations to Javier Millet on a great race for president of Argentina. The whole world was watching, I'm very proud of you. You will turn your country around and truly make Argentina great again. You have Tucker Carlson posting a photo alongside Millet. And then the Daily Wire's Ben Shapiro said that this is awesome news. And then finally, I wanna to go to the video posted by Marjorie Taylor Greene. She celebrated this win by Millet as well with this video embedded in her tweet. Let's watch. Equipo y deporte, afuera. Ministerio de Cultura, afuera. Ministerio de Ambiente y Desarrollo Sostenible, afuera. Ministerio de las Mujeres y Género y Diversidad, afuera. Ministerio de Obras Públicas, afuera, aunque te resistas. Ministerio de Ciencia y Tecnología e Innovación, afuera. Ministerio de Trabajo, Empleo y Seguridad Social, afuera. Ministerio de Educación, Adoctrinamiento, afuera. Ministerio de Transporte, afuera. Ministerio de Salud, afuera. Ministerio de Desarrollo Social, afuera. Se acabó el curro de la política. ¡Viva la libertad, carajo! Ok. I gotta say that fuera is a lot of fun, but really you wanna do away with the tourism ministry? I'm pretty sure tourism brings money into Argentina, no? And then you wanna do away with the technology and innovation ministry? No, no, look, he, he ripped up science, he ripped up labor, those are the workers. He ripped up transport, so you don't want any transportation in Argentina? Afuera. And, and, and these, look, this guy, he take, this is what I hate about right wing populism. They're trying to trick you into supporting corporate role, rule even more. He's like, okay, we are so tired of the status quo. So we should give everything to the top bankers and to the top corporations. And we should not serve the average Argentinian at all. How is that populism? How is that for the people? No, it's a trick, it's a trick to make the situation worse, not better. God damn it, the establishment is ruining this world. Thanks for watching, if you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.